How has it been going for this tour? Did you like this one as much as like the very first one that you did? The very first one was very tough. I, th I think we're just getting used to it now. Your English wasn't as good as it is now. <laughs> when I saw you last summer, your English had improved so much. Yeah, I don't... You just have to speak it with everyone all the time that you finally learned it? Yeah, I guess I, 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 guess I just didn't realize. I didn't realize that my English was improving. Because <laughs> I really saw a difference after like a year's time. Did you ever study it in school or anything like that? Yeah, but mostly it's like films and stuff. But, uh, oh, you study film in school? No. Or you watched it? It's like all the films in television, well, most of them are foreign and they're just subtitled. So you learned it that way? Yeah. Is that why you started singing in English too? Or did you always, when did you start singing in English? The first time we went abroad, it's just stupid to sing in Iceland because people don't understand it. <laughs> it's uh, so we just translated as well as we could, and and that's what we always done. We sing in Icelandic in Iceland, <laughs> and English in in Britain and the States and Canada. <laughs> American in the States. <laughs> and what about when you go to Japan? I don't know. We, t we try to sing in French when we were in France, but we're not very good in French. Yeah. Some German and some Danish, but not very much so. It's great. Who does most of the writing and consequently the translating, things like that? Is that a whole collaboration between all of you? The music is a total collaboration, but I make my lyrics and Aina makes his lyrics and I translate my, my lyrics and he translates his lyrics. As you can. So you study a lot of language in school, though. We studied Danish. You just had to. You just picked it up otherwise. Yeah, it happens to be the language of the world. <laughs> For now. You're, especially when you come from a place which, um, like Iceland, and only 250,000 people in the universe speak your language. <laughs> you sort of, you must be pretty stupid not, not learning English. Yeah, that's probably true. You, you would be sort of helpless. Had you been to um, England as a little girl ever? I mean, did you know, when was the first time you left Iceland? How old were you? I was nine years old. Okay. So you travel some. Is you going too far away? I went to Norway with my grandparents. And then did you realize how far away Iceland was? Well, it's not that far from Norway, but did it make you want to travel and see more of the world? Yeah. We, uh, I think all of us had traveled a lot before all this thing started with the sugar cubes. So uh, three of us had, had, well, actually four of us had lived for some period abroad. Um, oh, really? Did you? No, not me. Einar had studied for four years in, in Britain. Siki had lived for four years in Long Island and... Uh, oh, really? That's why he speaks his English. That's great. <laughs> I didn't know that. I actually didn't have time with that. Bray had lived for a year in Spain and Macca as well. Is he? Yeah. Yeah? And... Um, right. But still, I guess uh, most people that come from Iceland, they're very much... They're very Icelandic. Mm -hmm. How um, do you define very Icelandic, if you could? They're just very aware of where they come from. Proud. And, proud. Yeah. And, uh, well, that's not the main thing, though. <laughs> They're just very Icelandic, and they always return back home. It's, it's very few Icelanders that go somewhere and don't come back home. What about the desert? Did you guys play in Arizona ever? Did you ever have a chance to see that? Yeah, or? we we played in Arizona and Texas. That's very interesting. Most of the United States is very interesting especially in New York. It's like the opposite of Iceland. Yeah, as far as the city. And, uh, but, yeah, it's just very interesting. You, you travel and you meet pe people. People from the US are very different than people in Iceland. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's just Have difficult to- you got used to, to us a little bit after, uh, you know, three tours, the two and a half tours? Yeah. I, I, uh... <laughs> the first, it was definitely a, probably a culture shock for both, you know, Americans to meet you and our fascination for some, to meet somebody from Iceland for the first time. 
Yeah, they all thought we were, I don't know, um, some sort of primitives. <laughs> I guess we are. No, not at all. I think it's great. If anything, you're probably more enlightened, probably much more spiritual. I would say so. Yeah, you think so? What, what's like... different about Americans is they're obsessive with communicating. Mm. Everything goes, it's about communication and, and people are always, they always want to talk. They want to talk for like an hour about nothing. And, <laughs> and everybody's talking on television. Uh -huh. and, uh, Don't forget telephones. And uh, it's just, it's just, it was very shocking for the first tour. We thought, we thought Americans were not, that they were just, they had all this nervous energy and they had, had so much uh, um, need to express themselves about everything. And it was just shocking first and you became quite... Do you feel that... Um... Uh, but but, but you, you, get, you get used to it, you know, mm -hmm. it's... it's uh, and... Uh, <laughs> Do you feel that um, in Iceland, uh, the Icelanders are more typically expressive through art, through writing and songwriting and painting and... I don't think so. It, I think I've just realized through traveling in, that Icelanders are Europeans. I always thought Iceland were just Icelanders, but I think so they're, very, they're very European. How long ago, how long has the band been together? Um, Almost three years. Well, almost four years, actually. And how's it going? You all still best friends? Or were you ever best friends? Yeah, that's how this band started. That you were friends first? Yeah. Because you've been spending a lot of time together. It's probably a good thing that you are. Yeah. It's, uh... I think the best point is that we just, uh, we got very different tastes and very different ideas about how things should be. Does that help or does it I think make it difficult? It, it's the, it's uh, the only reason why, it, why we still exist, mm -hmm. I think. It's just so, so different that we keep surprising each other, I guess, something mm -hmm. like that. When you, uh, you tell me that you wrote the lyrics, does, um, does Anna write the parts that he sings? Yeah, I, I just write what I do, that's all. And then he, and then he fills in whatever compliments, or maybe? It's both way around. Uh, sometimes he starts with an idea, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's like 50-50. Uh, um, it usually starts with me making the, uh, the vocal line, the, the melody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it's 50-50 um, what happens with the lyrics, who starts. Mm -hmm. Just whatever the mood is. Where do you typically write? Do you all have a rehearsal studio? Well, we've had about 500. It's very difficult to have a rehearsal studio in Reykjavik. Right. It's just a small place and, and people don't like the noise. <laughs> What's it like when you go home now? I mean, because you guys are internationally famous. Do they treat you differently or is it still okay? No, Reykjavik is just too small a place for that. Yes. It's only 90,000 people and uh, everybody's sort of related or friends and, and I mean stars don't exist in Iceland <laughs> because you see them in the, in the bus and then they fall from the sky. <laughs> It's, it's, um, and doing autographs just doesn't exist in Iceland. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just something that happens in movies and Disney World and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, no, I, I don't think, I don't think we will ever be treated differently there. Not unless we become brats, brats, and I don't, <laughs> we, I think we managed pretty well to avoid so it far, so, so far, but I don't know. What do you, what does your family say about it? About, about you doing this, I mean, have they had a chance to see you anywhere else besides Reykjavik? Any of your relatives? Have they seen you play in London? 
anything like that. No, my mother has seen me, but the uh, rest of them haven't. They, they think it's pretty funny. <laughs> but the press in Iceland, they started off trying to make a big thing, thing out of it, that we were stars and stuff, driving in limousines. And, <laughs> but, you know, people just, you know, they weren't interested. It's, it's, it's just such a small town. It's, uh, and it's difficult to explain unless, unless you, you're from a small town yourself or something and you, you know what it's like. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I guess people are just too close. Keep it that way. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're Thank you.